you very much for inviting me. It really is an honor to be here, and uh, I will not be in a rush. I don't know of any place more important to be than right here, really, and I, and I appreciate so much what you're all doing, uh, especially, uh, to be honest with you, right now at this time. <laughs> you know, so much is going on that's uh, it's not necessarily positive. Um, it's just great to see people working hard for something so important and not losing focus. And I know you're not losing focus. God bless you for that. Um, you know, one of the reasons I've gotten involved in politics, I studied to be a priest for a long time. I was a Jesuit and very much believe in Matthew 25. And when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. And when I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was sick, you healed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And then they asked, well, well when did you do that? He says, well, when you did it to the least among us. And I know that's exactly what you do. And thank God for you. So again, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I'd like to thank the Every Life Foundation and the Rare Disease Legislative Advocates for this opportunity to speak. I really do appreciate it. And I'm here today to tell you about my legislation. We call it the Rare Disease Fund Act, or the RAD Fund. Before I dive into the specifics of this legislation, I want to share with you a story that highlights the need for novel approaches to drug development. Uh, it's a story of a family from San Diego whose 13-year-old daughter, Maya, was diagnosed with a rare degenerative neurological disease called CLN2. About 1,200 individuals in the world suffer from CNL2 with life expectancy only into their early 20s. Until recently, there was no treatment for CNL2. However, Biomarin recently had a therapy approved that would slow degeneration, hopefully by a necessary time for a cure to be developed. The sad truth is that my story is not unique, as all of you know. The vast majority of rare diseases do not have any treatments, and even some do only mitigate the symptoms or slow the progress of the disease. Because of this, many of you may be thinking the lack of therapies represents a scientific limitation, and that's true in some cases, but not in all. We need more and better science to fight these fights. However, I also would argue that the lack of therapies is due to the lack of financing for early stage therapeutic development. Currently, there is a steadily widening financing gap that exists between basic research and late stage clinical trials. This financing gap is referred to often as the valley of death, unfortunately. So why does this financing gap exist? Three reasons. First, the developing therapies is expensive. Some estimates peg the cost at developing the therapy at one to three billion dollars. Secondly, it is incredibly time consuming as it often takes over a decade. In contrast, most technology startups have about the four to seven year time period to market. And investors almost always are going to, of course, pursue the quickest return. Lastly, it's very risky. A therapy Tar that targets a, a genetic disease has a 20% chance of making it through the FDA process, 6 or 7% for a therapy that treats cancer. So the current financing model must rely heavily on high-risk, high-reward venture capital investments. So what does that mean? Well, in 2015, there were $129 billion in global venture, cap global venture capital investments. Of that, $17 billion was in healthcare, with 10 billion of that in the United States. That simply cannot be enough, it's not enough money to develop all the promising therapies that have currently been discovered. Right now, there are literally hundreds of potentially life-saving compounds waiting on the shelves for financing necessary to develop them. This is a financing problem, not only a science problem. We need more money going into the therapeutic development. Lucky for us, Two very brilliant researchers at MIT, Dr. Andrew Lowe and Dr. Roger Stein, proposed a solution. Instead of developing drugs as a one-offs using the current venture capital model, they suggested pooling a large number of potential compounds, maybe 10 to 20, together. This would diversify the development process and vastly reduce the risk of in to investors. Instead of needing 30% returns to attract venture capitalists, the fund could issue bonds that pay five to eight percent returns. This level of returns is ideal for large institutional investors like pension funds, mutual funds, and life insurers. To put this into the context of the U.S. bond market, it is close to $40 trillion, 
while the U.S. venture capital market is only $74 billion. Huge, huge difference. So we found our money. You might be asking yourself, why aren't we currently doing this? The simple answer is that while the type of financing model is very common, it's used in the movie industry, among others, it has never been applied to therapeutic development. Risk-adverse financial markets are unlikely to step forward to test the concept. That's why my bill, the RAD Fund, steps in. My legislation would create a pilot program to demonstrate that this model works. My bill creates a privately owned and operated corporation outside of government. The corporation would purchase compounds and, development and develop them through the end of phase two of the FDA trials. The U.S. government would act as an insurer on the bonds and would charge the corporation a guarantee fund, thereby costing the government little to no money. The goal is to demonstrate the viability of the model and then allow the private sector to step in and replicate the model, which I believe it abs absolutely will do once the model is proven. This would inject potentially hundreds of billions of dollars potentially in a much needed capital into developing therapies for rare diseases. And as I said earlier, the developing treatments for rare diseases, both a science problem and a financing problem. My hope is that the RAD Fund will help solve the financing problem so that children like Maya can receive the treatments they so desperately need. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you. And again, uh, my legislative uh, director and my chief of staff, both of them, have been working very, very hard on this issue, and they are here. Uh, we honestly believe that this could be a financing breakthrough. It's done in so many other contexts, and it's done very well, and we think it could work here, and we think, um, again, uh, that with focus and hard work that we can make this happen, and we're very focused. I know you're even more focused, and again, I, I thank you so uh, deeply from the bottom of my heart that you're pushing for something that's really good. Uh, we need that in, in America today, not only for the people that need the therapies, I think for our own spirit, you know, for our own well-being as a nation. We, we should be fighting for these things. It really makes us a better people. So again, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I apologize for I interrupted, but again, I thank you so much. Appreciate it. God bless you all.